Hello, sir.
Mr. Venkatarama, Dr. K. V. Salapati, Dr. R. Jayavik, Dr. B. Subramanian, and Mr. B. Ramalingam to take the dais. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Megan Ramana, the President of Alpha, Dr. Kevin Chalapati, Founder Director of Coral Foods and uh, part of CFAR CLRA, Dr. Jaywil, the Dean EC Pick, Dr. Subramanian, outstanding scientist of the CSAR CLRA, Mr. Ramalingam, my good friends, students, and all those who are assembled here. It's possibly destiny that this institute celebrates its 75 years in an year in which two legendaries who were associated with this institute also celebrate their birth centenaries. I'm referring to Dr. Naidu Ma and Professor G. N. Ramachandran. And it also happens that uh, their centenaries come back to back to the Institute in September and October, respectively. For the information of the students who are here, it needs to be highlighted that perhaps this was the only institution in the country which was born and established in Chennai because of an academic research and industry partnership. Historically, though we don't have any documentary evidences for it, it is said that the Central Leather Research Institute would have gone to West Bengal, where there was a flourishing leather industry at the time of independence. However, an effort from the academic side in the form of the Vice Chancellor of the then University of Madras and the flourishing industrial leadership in this part of the world ensured that this institute was established in Chennai and not only in Chennai, very close to the university system itself. Therefore, it becomes very easy for us to be called as the Department of Leather Technology of the Anna University. Today, this leadership efforts, as far as the Central Leather Research Industry Institute is concerned, whatever we are today, 
is possibly because of the longest serving leadership of Dr. Naidu. You talk about somebody coming in as a director of this institute in his 30s and going on to become the DG of the CSAR in his 40s. It's something which we can't even think about today. He may not even become a scientist in our 30s these days. That is a current, uh, that's a kind of personality about whom we are talking about. And uh, when, when you go back and uh, look at what Naidoma is all about, uh, I think I should add here at this point of time that uh, our CLRI library, what we call as the Knowledge Resource Center, has come out with a full listing of uh, the publications or the papers, etc., that has been authored by Dr. Naidoma. And uh, I find uh, that from my head KRC that more than about 140 documents uh, where Dr. Naidama's writings, research, etc., are there, have now been uh, converted into digital documents, essentially meaning that you can access it from anywhere. So we are talking about a personality who, in his longest career as a director of this institute, ensured that the next 50 years of this institute, or even more than that, as we go forward, is remembered for its partnership with not just the industry, but also the academic part. And therefore, in this, while we have the Naidoma lectures being organized, previously we had the Naidoma lecture on any, not any, on any specific date, but for the last two years, uh, we decided that uh, the Naidoma lecture would be part of our leather research industry get together essentially because the leather research industry get-together was previously known as the Tanner's get-together and it was conceived by Dr. Naidoma and now we call it as the leather research uh, and uh, industry government part conclave, the, the lyric conclave and the Naidoma lecture would be the first lecture uh, to commence the lyric conclaves. This is how we are doing it from 2020 onwards. So, in addition to that, from this year onwards, we are also looking forward to organizing on the 10th of September. This year alone, we are not doing it on 10th of September because we have the centenary lectures being organized on Saturday, the 10th of September, uh, wherein uh, the Director General of CSAR, uh, Dr. Kalesh Shilvi, is going to preside over and uh, we have the Asia representative of uh, the IDRC Canada, which was the last organization to which uh, Dr. Naidama went and uh, he unfortunately died on his return from there. So the Asia representative of IDRC would be giving the Naidama centenary lecture uh, on the 10th. And uh, we are also expecting, uh, if everything goes well, the presence of uh, Mr. M. Hashim and Mr. M. Rafiq Ahmed, both of whom who had tremendous one-to-one -one contacts with uh, Dr. Naidama and uh, cherish how he had created a partnership between the Institute and the industry. So this Trinity lecture series that we are talking about would be an annual event here and after on the 10th of September. And we expect uh, a different model here in which we would try to have a lecture from the academic side a lecture from the research side and a, lecture and a talk from the industry side. This is essentially in honor of the trinity that he had established and that which is the success of this institute as well. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome all of you here once again and uh, I express my deepest thanks to all of you who are on the dais for having readily accepted our invitation. Uh, though we had given you a very short notice uh, of this program, because we were trying to figure out the dates, essentially, because one team of my colleagues have just left for uh, uh, Tenali. Uh, they are uh, going to be there uh, uh, in uh, the schools where uh, Dr. Naidama had studied, and the Jigyasa program of the CSAR is uh, moving to uh, that site. So basically, uh, we are going to take the school programs also to all the places where Dr. Naidama studied and culminating in the 10th of September lectures. Uh, I would also like to inform all of you 
that uh, there will be two classrooms uh, which are being set up in the KVCLRI, which was inaugurated by Dr. Naidurma. And one of those classrooms is being sponsored partially by the family of Dr. Naidurma as well. So this would be on the, uh, the foundation stone for that would be laid on the 10th. So having said this, uh, I look forward to the uh, lectures that are being planned today. And I hope all of you would be with us in the journey of the future as we take this uh, Trinity series lectures forward year on year. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your warm welcome address. Uh, it's time for honoring our guests with the traditional Angavastram. I request the director to honor our guest, Dr. K.V. Chalapati. Dr. B. Subramani. Dr. R. Jayavi. Mr. Rangat Rama. Mr. P. Raman. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to welcome Mr. Rangat Rama, President Alpha, and MD Amulya Leather Implex to deliver the felicitation address. My pronouns to all the dignitaries, Sita uh, Alidai, Sulapidai and my blessings to all the students present here. I am blessed here today to be on the dais as a president of Alpha for two reasons. One, it is uh, Professor Naidama's Earth Centenary Day celebration, celebrations of this year. And second, the series of lectures like uh, Professor Naidama Research Industry and Academy Trinity Lecture Series being uh, the first one today. My first meeting with uh, Professor Naidama was during my third year BTEC in 79-8 academic year when we were in third year. He took us the class Theory and Practice of Leather Manufacture 1. Such a great man having rose to the Director General of CSIR taking class for third year. We were only 19 years old at the time. And I was blessed that that, time, that year I was the class representative and was expected to go to his room after we all assembled coming from AC Tech in the classroom and I have to go to his room, ask his PA first whether he's free, then ask, request him to come to the class. So that is how our first meeting with Professor Nayadama, such a great, tall, ever smiling man. We still remember him after even 40 years. In this connection, today we are organizing this uh, lecture series. We have three eminent people here. The first one, Dr. P. Subramanian, who is going to lecture is on the research side. He was former outstanding scientist of CSIR CLRI and presently is a visiting faculty of IIT Chennai. He has got many awards during his career and made significant contribution to theoretical and competition chemistry. Second, Dr. Chalapati, who did his research in CLRI but went into industry, set up companies in shoe industry, and he is the chairman of a group of companies like Ajanta Shoe Company, Quara Shoes, and Quara Infra. And we welcome you, sir, to deliver your lecture on behalf of the industry. And third, Dr. Jayvel, who is the dean of AC Tech campus, Anna University. He has 31 years of research experience and 26 years of teaching experience. He received many awards and recognitions. Welcome, sir. Dr. Now, coming to the Alpha Oration Lecture, the Alpha Orate has been presenting the Alpha Orator Award to honor personalities 
who have contributed immensely to the cause of leather as a special feature. This year, the award was presented to Mr. Ramalingam for his defining contribution to practice of leather technology under corporate management and marketing. He finished his BTEC in 1989, joined in Tata and rose to the top position. Presently, he is the head leather cleaners of Bharti International in Chennai. He will be presenting his lecture today on behalf of the oratory lecture. Once again, thanking each and everyone present here and especially the director of CLRA, CSI of CLRA and the staff for making these events to happen today. Thank you one and all. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir, for your kind address and grace in the occasion. We now move on to the Noidoma Trinity Lecture Series. The first speaker of the series is Dr. K. V. Chalapadi, founder director, Cora Shoes, who is representing the industry. Before we move on to the lecture, I request the dignitaries and the director to take the seat to comfortably listen the lectures. I deem it as a pleasure and an honor to be invited to CLRI to give Naidama Research Industry Academy PDT lecture series and I thank organizers for their invitation. Before going for the brief presentation, because time is very short, now I show some milestones regarding our industry. Here in 1986, we have started with the six workers and cutting in a small uh, thatched uh, hut by the side of my house. So this is the first step where my wife started a tiny industry with the six workers only. Next slide, please. Next. Uh, This is the place where we have, we had 30 workers and instead of components, we have converted components also into footwear afterwards. Next please. This is the present Ajanta Shoe company where we have employed 500 people and making shoe of us and exporting to um, Europe. Next please. This is also shoe company. Just our outside picture. Next slide, please. This is our Quora shoes where we have employed around 1000 people making full shoes and exporting to Europe. Next, please. Next, next. This is the award received by my wife, life partner, Quora Vijaya. That is for 
making a woman empower man by Mrs. Governor Rangarajan. Next, please. This is the award, first award received by my wife from Industry Minister of Andhra Pradesh for as a best entrepreneur, I think during 90s. Next, please. This is the recent award she has received uh, on All India Women as a all India woman entrepreneur for Export Excellency Award. Next, please. This is the appreciation by our MSME Minister Tamil Nadu uh, because uh, we have a very close relationship with him. He has appreciated for the award received by us. Next. This, next, please. This is our uh, customers along with our factory in Rani Peck. Next, please. This is the Best Teacher Award, State Meritorious Best Teacher Award for overall performance as a teacher for about 35 years. Uh, received Best Teacher Award from Chandra Next, please. This is the uh, this is a silver certified green factory logo. Next, please. This is our store. Please pass on. This is our floor cutting in Rani Pet. Next, this is the upper making section. Please, next, please. This is full shoe section. Next, please. This is packing section. This is dispatching section. Just why? Why? Because we have started with a hut and reached this stage. Quite interesting. I want to show this because I want to show to the not to the big stalwarts here, to the students that anything can be done, achieved from this graph. Next, please. Oh, okay. Close. Now, before the narrating my association with uh, Dr. Nailama, I wish to briefly mention my association with the CLRI. I have joined in CLRI in 1974 as a research scholar after taking study leave from my college at Tirupati in the project called Radio Tracer Techniques for the Determination of Moisture in Leather. After doing research for one year in the project, I came to know that it was not suitable for teaching my PhD degree, for which I have approached Professor M. Santapagaru at that time, he then director of CLRI, who was guiding a lot of research groups in various projects in CLRI as well as in AC Tech and requested to change that project. He suggested me to take up their leather based research only if I want to continue my research in CLRI. Hence, I have chosen mixed ligand complexes of chromium 3 as topic involving chromium 3, various amino acids, carboxylic acid for the study, which has got some relevance to the masking effects of these ligands during chrome 10. I am happy to mention that Dr. T. Ramasamy and D. Ramasamy also associated with various projects in the chemical lab and a good competitive atmosphere was prevailing to work up to the extended hours late in the midnight. One day it so happened that I have locked the lab keeping Dr. T. Ramasamy inside without knowing that he was working uh, at the time inside the lab. Thanks to Dr. T. Ramasamy for excusing me for my mistake. During that period Dr. Nairama used to visit every lab to know about the research projects personally. Once he discussed about a problem of village thatched roof getting damaged soon and subjected for repairs and re remake, affecting the poor people life. To solve this problem, I have suggested to spray some waterproof material on the thatched biomass used for covering the hut as it is degraded by bacterial action during the rainy season. This came to my mind because I also came from a village where more people live in the thatched houses. From that time on onwards, I was participating in all the meetings of the institute when Dr. Naidama was attending. In one of the meetings, extension scientist from CLRI was raising a problem that tanneries do not cooperate and relieve, uh, reveal their problems to the CLRI team, fearing that their problems will be exposed to the competitors through the publication of CLRI research team. As young research scholars, 
I propose some solution that we can process the same type of letters in our pilot plant in the tannery and solve the problems and publish about the best letters we produce. Then Nainama quickly responded, if that is possible, our people can start the industry of their own. I was a little bit worried that my solution may not be appropriate. Later, when I met him separately and discussed about this, he explained me that commercial scale is not possible by our scientists, since we are accustomed only for research scale operation. During my stay in the institute, initially, I was in the opinion that an entrepreneurship is a risky job because we may lose our gain during the process of business, whereas job is very safe and for many reasons. As many as my stay was I continued for four more years in this institute, after keenly observing the tanners get together and visit to various tanneries, visiting leather fairs conducted every year in the CLRI campus by our visionary Dr. Naidama, I have changed my opinion that entrepreneurship is more challenging than the job. I have completed my PhD project and published papers in national and international journals like uh, um, American and uh, British Chemical Society, participated in national and seminars. I went back to join in my teaching post. I put myself on question that what is the use of my research to the society, especially living in the villages. From where? I came from and how does it solve the social evils along with the poverty prevailing in that society. According to Dr. Rai Naidama, they are neglected and unrecognized masses by every segment of elite society including scientific and educated. I did my surveys during my leisure time and holidays. I have visited other CSR institutes also like CMAP, CFTRI and identified some agriculture farmers produce as a raw material for many products normally used in urban society. The cost of this above inputs is less than 10% of the consumer price and hence the farmers are losing heavily and poverty levels remain constant in the villages, village masses. After urbanization and globalization took place, some migrated masses improved their economic status. Even today, people living in the villages remain poor when compared to the urban people, in addition to several measures taken by the subsequent government. As suggested by Dr. Nairama, science and technology should become the propellants for progress of the village masses and, their, and this Trinity lecture series may give some direction to the educationists, scientists and the industrialists to work together as a team to solve the problems of rural society and suggest the governments to make policies suitable for the isolated masses to involve them in the nation building activities without which our country's growth will remain very slow. Coming to our industry, we have started with five workers as you have seen in 1986. Today our group is employing about 1,500 workers and staff reaching our export targets to 150 crores of annual turnover by 2023 March. This is all due to the adoption of some of the following essential characteristics necessary for the entrepreneur to run his R enterprise successfully and followed to the micro details. One of the important characteristics is desire. We must have a strong desire to become an entrepreneur to provide gainful employment to others. Thereby, you get not only financial benefit, good recognition and also to become backbone to the nation's development. Somehow the element of desire was seated in my mind during my childhood when I saw my grandfather selling village stand leather to the farmers in the village for making water sacks to lift water from shallow wells for irrigation. In turn, he obtained the leather from village pit tannery managed by our village cobbler Naganna. He collected hides from the dead animals in the village and processes the same by his pit tanning method by using lime locally available bark and cast oil. This became highlighted in my mind during my stay in CLRI and converted into burning desire to start enterprise in this area of leather and leather products. Conceptual ability. 
entrepreneur should know the entire concept of running the enterprise regarding inputs its suppliers process or products and their marketing by appointing suitable efficient staff to motivate them to gain ownership and responsibility to do their work with a desire to make the enterprise success after participating participating in all the activities of clri started by our visionary dr y naidama i have learned some concepts about leather industry and the inputs needed for the process of outputs like leather footwear components footwear and their marketability so technical knowledge entrepreneur of the or the person appointed by or outsourced should have a strong technical background to provide and manage to solve the technical problems that arise during the process of manufacturing to get best quality product for low price and supply to the customer in lead time which increase the competitiveness of the enterprise as i have understood naidama concepts of science technology and technique i have applied my science background as a chemist to solve the problems of tanning technology and in turn applied the same to modify techniques in solving the problems of production process to obtain quality goods for competitive price within lead time required by our customer so coming to the drive necessary to start any industry this is the effort to do work to solve the problems of the company immediately thereby entrepreneur and the people working with him should become committed persons to start the work continue the work till the desired target is reached this part was taken by my wife my life partner shrimati kora vijaya and later on my son satish and ramesh joined after the education in india and abroad as family members they have made all the efforts to transform our desire into reality during the gradual growth of our industry so mental ability also is very important for an entrepreneur to make the enterprise success the entrepreneur should have a mental ability to take decisions without any pressure from different issues arising during business process which enables us to take balanced decisions in the interest of the successful business continuation all our family members cultivated the same philosophy to have focus on the customer's requirement and set the procedures to achieve the same and make our employees also become partners and responsible persons for their job to convert the problems into solutions during the process of production without blaming the others to achieve highest performance required by our customer we have developed the culture of commitment to achieve the quality targets by planning doing checking and acting to complete the task hence task based process was set to achieve the quality in our products which is essential for any enterprise to survive and sustain the systems like 5s tqm are implemented in all stages of our process of production and the same message is spread to our suppliers also to have quality inputs to get the quality outputs the entire process is standardized and uh, attain uh, to attain sustenance so empathy is a very important thing to take decisions correct decisions to take decisions after assuming that you are in the position of opposite side person with whom you are dealing with when we take decisions we always take other side view also into consideration to negotiate and manage controversial issues that are arising during the business process to avoid conflicts sociability an entrepreneur as an entrepreneur we maintain good social relations with our customers workforce financial partners bureaucrats and political leaders fin financial stability as an entrepreneur we always maintain financial stability with our bankers obtain their uninterrupted support for our expansions in 35 years so analytical thinking as an entrepreneur we have to analyze all the problems by applying the principles of cause and effect root cause analysis and fitness to the purpose to take balanced decisions which are conducive to the benefits of enterprise and success so we have also developed communication skills among our staff and uh, with the application of computers to see that all the information is recorded measured and improved 
to improve the quality and productivity, eliminating wastage. So finally, uh, I think I it is the inspiration due to Dr. Naidama. We have I have become an entrepreneur. In fact, our family, not myself. So I was also basically a teacher. So I have only um, made the entrepreneurs, not really entrepreneur. I have made my sons and also my wife as an entrepreneur. And also now after slowly retiring from active life, now I am visiting several colleges and participating in EDP programs, entrepreneurial development programs. What are the basic characters necessary? And also I have visited several countries where I have observed recently, two years back, I was in Japan and there our uh, state bank regional manager is our banker. So gave me very, very interesting information. They were supplying a Raman spectroscopy to our bar. He was interestingly wanted to know how big the factory was. He visited that factory and uh, only three engineers were sitting there and they said, sir, we are only assembling these parts and selling this uh, spectroscope to the uh, bar. Huge amounts were drawn from India in the form of Excel. So therefore, that is the concept of nil inventory. Need not have big factories to start an industry. So I suggest all uh, young students here, have the mind of starting, become an entrepreneur, because in need not have cross of rupees, are a big building to become an entrepreneur. And that is how Nayama impressed me. In fact, some of his lectures where I heard the nil inventory system in Japan is very important. That's why I have started with a small hut, you have seen, where we have done in those days 80 lakhs of business per annum. Because the leathers are purchased in perimet, are not in perimet. In fact, first we have started with only 2,000 rupees investment, brought some letters to CLRI with the help of Jairaman and CK Rao. I have converted those leathers into beautiful soft leathers like butter leathers, technology, same technology, cut into components, distributed to cobbler. They used to sell the same footwear as butter, for, but only 30 to 40 rupees, whereas butter in those days that was 100 rupees. That is how my wife became very popular among government and the uh, other bank agencies. They have come forward, sometimes cash also was deposited to buy the components. So it is the idea that was generated from the mind of Dr. Naidama that is called appropriate technology, alternate technology. At the time he was chairman for development of alternatives. One day he asked our dear Ramaswamy, why can't you take this Dr. Chalapati who was here interacting in many times here in CLRI. Fortunately, there was no force in this uh, chemical lab. Therefore, I was carved out to be a stone in the college for washing the minds of the students. Whereas Dr. Ramaswamy was carved to be, reach the sanctum sanctum of CLRI and occupied the highest position. So both of us were carved in different ways. Today, still, to the end of my life, I just encourage the students and share my knowledge with the youngsters to start the industry and become entrepreneurs, make the uh, India uh, the manufacturing hub. Today, what type of people the industry is expecting from CLRI? Nairama has described in several articles. Everybody knows what type of people industry wants. We want committed people. So we can make them to learn in the industry, but they must come with commitment and some knowledge and uh, prepare to take the ownership for their work at least. So I think uh, time is uh, over for me. Thank you very much. I have many things to share, but very short period of memory. So thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity once again. And uh, if opportunity comes, I will also uh, come uh, in some, on some other occasion to give training to your students in the EDP programs and bring also some government officials uh, to give them procedures. Thank you very much, sir, for giving the opportunity.
Thank you, sir, for sharing your experience with Professor Naidama and highlighting the contribution and enthusiasm of Dr. Naidama in leather sector. We move on to the second lecture. The second speaker of the day is Dr. Aj Jayavid, Dean, AC Tech Anna University, who is representing the academy. <laughs> Professor Jayavid received his PhD from Anna University in 1995. He has 37, 31 years of research experience in material science and nanotechnology and 26 years of teaching experience. For his research credit, he has published about 470 research papers in the international peer-reviewed journals with NCNX of 53. He has guided 43 research students so far. He has been designated, uh, designated as a highly cited author by Royal Society of Chemistry UK. Professor Jayavid is a recipient of several awards and recognition. Uh, when I looked at the CV, it was too long. So make it uh, short, uh, I name a few of them. Uh, is a fellow of Tamil Nadu Academy of Sciences. He's a fellow of Society, uh, Society for Advancement of Electrochemical Science and Technology, the Senior Scientist Award from Academy of Sciences Chennai, and Mid Career Award uh, 2021 by University Grant Commission, and the MRSI Medal in 2019, Research Excellence Award 2019, Lifetime Achievement Award 2019 by Indian Spectrophysics Association, Tamil Nadu. He has over 15 years of administrative experiences as a director, Center for Nanoscience and Technology, director, research, and director in charge, Center for International Affairs at Anna University. Professor Jayavid is a member of several academic and professional bodies like Board of Studies, Academic Council, Research Advisory Council, and Governing Council of many institutions. He is currently a dean, AC Tech campus, Anna University. With this introduction, it's our pleasure to welcome Professor Jayavir to deliver his lecture. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir, for the very exhaustive uh, introduction. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Esteemed uh, Director of CLRA, Dr. K.G. Sina. The President of Alpha, Mr. Venkat Ramanan. The previous speaker, Dr. K. V. Chalapadi, former <laughs> director of Korasus. And my good friend, the senior uh, scientist, Dr. V. Subramanian. The Alpha Orator Awardee, Mr. Ramalingam, head leather business. Bhartia International Limited, fellow scientists of CLRA, staff and students. Indeed, I am very much delighted and honored to have been invited for this uh, Dr. Nayadama Trinity Lecture Series. Though I am not uh, specialized in leather technology, I have a very strong association, very long association with CLRA scientists. Because as I was introduced by a friend, I stayed in AC Tech and many of my hostel mates were uh, doing PhD in uh, CLRI. And uh, in fact, Dr. Raghav Rao was my neighbor with them in my hostel. So we used to have every day uh, crossing through CLRI and we used to also take part in many functions and programs organized uh, in the very same hall as well as uh, CLRI campus. Um, as a Dean of AC Tech, uh, so I have been given the responsibility of talking about the academic uh, cooperation of Dr. Nairama for the successful conduct of this uh, leather technology program. So the Alagapa College of Technology was started in 1944. And the very next year, the BEAC Tech, it's a two years BEAC Tech program in leather technology was started. And later it was converted into BTEC degree program in leather technology. And uh, this is uh, one of the flagship programs offered by an educational institution in collaboration with uh, a research laboratory, which has the world class facilities for these specialized areas. 
And this model has facilitated the students to get an opportunity to access set of that facilities during the undergraduate degree program itself. And the great success of this model had led to the start of uh, two postgraduate programs in this uh, campus, uh, in this CLRA, Leather Technology and M-Tech Food Technology. Thanks to the successful directors of this uh, CLRA and also the large number of scientists and staff who have been directly and indirectly associating for the success of this program. When we are talking about the academia industry collaboration now, it was 75 years ago, this concept was, uh, this opportunity was provided by the students of leather technology program uh, to have the direct uh, you know, uh, interaction with the industries. And uh, this is one of the uh, biggest uh, uh, successes and uh, this has been considered as a role model for many institutions. When I was the director of uh, international relations, I used to have uh, many uh, foreign visits uh, to have an MOU with the Anna University. And every institution, wherever we go, we used to give intro about Anna University. When we talk about the uh, programs of AC Tech, and we used to refer to this particular program, which is being uh, I mean, conducted in collaboration with the National Laboratory, especially in Italy, there were so many uh, institutions running the food science and other programs, and they were very much appreciated. And uh, in fact, they wanted to have more elaborate uh, details about the success of this program, how it was. It's more than uh, you know, uh, 75 years now. That is the kind of uh, uh, uniqueness of this program. And uh, I must thank all those who have directly involved and indirectly involved in the success of this program at this stage. And needless to say that Nagarama's contributions to the Alagappa College of Technology, and in particular, the Leather Technology Program has been very tremendous for their uh, international recognition and also the uniqueness. And uh, recently, last week, we had uh, uh, Dr. G.S. Ladakh, Dr. Centenary Celebration at AC Tech, in association with the AC Tech Alumni Association. And we had many other technologies and the industry people, they came for this program. They fondly recollected their uh, uh, no, uh, alma mater and also their uh, experiences with uh, uh, the, the three great uh, solvers of AC Tech, uh, Professor Nairama, Professor G.S. Lada, and Professor Sandapa. Because on those days, the BTEC admission was based on their one-to-one -one, uh, uh, interview. And the way uh, they used to face the interview with these three solvers, and also the way they have the diverse spread and knowledge. Because Professor Nairama, though he specialized in leather, and he used to give a lot of uh, you know, um, uh, directions and suggestions for uh, chemistry people. And uh, one of the industries that they were telling that when we had a discussion with Dr. Nayarama for about uh, 10 minutes, we will have uh, 10 different uh, open research problems, both for industry as well as uh, you know, uh, research students. Such a kind of uh, you know, wide knowledge uh, we have. And uh, in fact, uh, one of the uh, recent uh, functions organized in Delhi uh, last year, the vice president, the former vice president of uh, India, Mr. Ngaya Nair, recollected many of his uh, uh, achievements. Uh, the vision of uh, Dr. Nairama was to take the applications of science and technology for the common good, propelled by societal values, which was also narrated by the previous speaker. He had uh, very clearly outlined the set of goals and objectives and the values that should be guided their applications as a tools for the betterment of lives of people and as a catalyst of change for socio-economic development. This we have been talking now after 75 years of uh, independence, but this has been realized by this uh, individual, uh, Dr. Nayama, uh, almost five decades ago. So the, the footpath or the pathways that he created for uh, leather technologies, not only for the leather technologies, also for the students and uh, faculty of AC Tech has been very uh, uh, productive. And uh, those kind of uh, you know, guidance and uh, support uh, 
with the students of uh, AC Tech, the leather technology students of AC Tech, had the opportunity to uh, uh, to realize or to feel those kind of uh, you know, uh, atmosphere on those days. And Dr. Naidoma was considered as an ambassador for uh, social change who demonstrated how scientists and technologists will be effective agents of radical changes in the society that he has realized during his tenure as the, both as the director of CLRA and also the director general of uh, CSER. As uh, Mr. Venkat Raman recollected his experience in, uh, here, uh, he could take uh, classes for BTEC students even after uh, uh, no, becoming the director general of uh, CSER. That was the kind of uh, you know, commitment uh, those days uh, people had, especially Dr. Nayanama. And uh, that was also one of the reasons that the government of India has now identified uh, Dr. Nayadama as one of the greatest scientists of this nation. And they um, uh, decided to celebrate the birth centenary of uh, uh, this uh, great uh, personality. Uh, as I said recently, while releasing the book on uh, Dr. Nayadama, uh, uh, titled as Essays, Teachers, Notes, and Others. Uh, the former president of India, Sri Venkatraya uh, Naidu, suggested that the publication of uh, this book, uh, of Naidu's contributions, should be included as a part of the curriculum for the student of higher studies to enable the budding scientists to acquire the correct understanding and orientation at an early stage of their learning. And this has been uh, a very uh, uh, essential for those both as an undergraduate as well as postgraduate level, so that looking at the contributions of these great people will uh, trigger their uh, uh, knowledge and ideas so that uh, they can have a direct connect with the industries. Okay, So uh, that kind of opportunities have been created very long back and uh, I'm sure that uh, the students of leather technology have been now uh, following that, uh, this concept and uh, that is also one of the successes of uh, uh, the students of leather technology. So, uh, in fact, uh, uh, in fact, I myself had some uh, uh, association, as I said, and uh, very recently, uh, two PhD students were doing PhD under the scope supervisor of uh, uh, Dr. Sanjeev Gupta and myself, and who has done some work on the um, incorporation of nanoparticles in the leather finishing. And another uh, student uh, by name, Tarunya, he also worked uh, and, uh, Dr. Kiran. And uh, I was the co supervisor for the student. She has developed a lot of uh, you know, uh, new ideas and concepts, uh, which is very useful for the other industries. And she is now in IIT Madras. So, with this, uh, um, I, I take this opportunity to uh, thank uh, the CLRA, the scientists of CLRA, especially uh, the initiatives of Dr. Nayadamma. Um, uh, through which the AC Tech was very fortunate to have such a visionary leader to transform the academic knowledge to industry, uh, industrial needs, uh, both in leather technology and other allied sciences. And when we uh, realize the importance of uh, the theoretical and experimental aspects of the research, uh, we have the concept of what is called, if you do something, try to know something about that. And if you know something, Try to do something with that. That is the concept which uh, uh, Dr. Nayadama inculcated among the scientists, and uh, that was the actually the mantra uh, for the success of this institution. And uh, we all know uh, that how CLRA has contributed for the industrial development in very uh, critical uh, stages for the development of this. One. With this, I once again thank the organizers for inviting me for this very important function. Thank you very much. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir, for highlighting the vision of Nairoma in Leather Academy. We now move on to the third speaker. The third speaker of the Trinity Lecture Series is Dr. B. Subramanian, former outstanding scientist, JCSCLRI, who is representing the research by Nidam. Although introduction is not required for a CLR audience, so CLR wish to highlight the contribution made by Dr. V. Subramanian in research. For 
other audience and the students who are sitting here. Uh, Dr. V. Subraman received his PhD uh, in physics uh, from University of Madras. Uh, of course, he did in Central Research Institute under the mentorship of Dr. T. Ram Swami, former Secretary DSP and former Director of CSLRI. He did his postdoctoral research in Arizona State University, and then after that, he moved to CLRI. So, he has uh, supervised more than 20 students, uh, and he has published more than 300 research articles in international reputed journals with H index of 43. Uh, he has published three book chapters, I mean 11 book chapters. Uh, he has uh, eight cover page articles. He has received several awards, including CRSA Young Scientist Award in 2003, CRSA Bronze Medal in 2008. He's a fellow of, fellow of the National Academy of Sciences, Allahabad, and also fellow of Indian Chemical Society. Indian Academy of Sciences, Bangalore. His professional positions include the former outstanding scientist in CSSRI and the former Dean of Chemical Sciences, Academy of Science and Innovative Research, former coordinator, ACSAR, CSSRI, adjunct professor, Department of Chemistry, IIT Madras. Dr. Subramanian has made significant contribution to the field of theoretical and computational chemistry. His seminal contribution includes the understanding of non-covalent interaction in variety of molecular system structure, stability, and reactivity of biomolecules, unraveling the interaction of biological macromolecules with nanomaterials, and designing new materials for hydrogen storage and solar cell applications. So with this small introduction, I now request Dr. B. Subramanian to deliver his lecture. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dennis. To begin with, I would like to thank the organizers for having me here to give this talk. It's a very special for me in the sense that it's the first opportunity series. I thought that I will talk to you on the kind of work that Professor Naidama and Dr. Ram Nadal worked together in biophysics. Both have done tremendous work, and uh, Probably this audience may not know much about uh, Dr. Ramanandan, but you know, we heard about the Nairama because of his stubborn personality. But you know, not many really know about uh, Dr. Ramanandan. I thought that I will take some time to uh, introduce you to Dr. Ramanandan, but I will start from the history. Our journey started from 1945. I think Sheshachanam Chaudhary was interested with the responsibility of establishment of Sela. The foundation stone was laid on 24th April 1948. But the very important point here is, a very, very important point here is, he identified already Nairama as the potential leader for this particular institute. And then Nairama was appointed as the lecturer in IFT. And then he was deputed to Leeds University as well as USA to get advanced training as well as PhD. And then after obtaining PhD and uh, training in leather industry, he joined CLRI as a senior scientific officer. By that time, already BM Das was appointed as the director of the first director of this institute. And uh, later on, you now the entire institute was gathered by uh, BM Das and Naira. The kind of a problems that they have selected, even today it is valid. Most of our problems, the pursuit of our research in this particular area is a country. Still, we have not solved all the problems. If you look at the topics, you will understand that. So this is the inauguration picture by T. Tikshravachari. And one important point is this already said many times in this very auditorium by many people, Dr. Raman was present. I'm not going to highlight that Raman was present here, but I want to say that Professor J.N.R. was here. That not many know about it. GNR also attended this particular function, inaugural function of the main building. This is the structure of our old CLRI with the two floors. And the birth of Tilichari. I think Dr. Sriram already explained to you how this has evolved in the early days, in the formative years of CLRI. Um, VC of Madras University, he put a lot of pressure on the government to have this institute at this particular place. Because already we have INT, we have another industry. 
flourishing leather industry in Tamil Nadu. Somehow he persuaded and got this particular paratri here. And you can see that uh, we started the program uh, during the 1945 BSC PG program and leather technology and BSC tech. I traced this document. The reason is I was asked to coordinate the Madras University PhD registration by the directors of this institute. Then I went and traced, is there any MOU between? See, the new present management asked us to give the MOU. What is the, where is the MOU? No, at that time, no, the personalities involved in making this particular degree program are very tall leaders. Professor Dhanadamma, Professor Mudalaya uh, sir, right? No, so they, they are very, very tall leaders. No question asked. No MOU. No agreement between University of Madras and later with Anna University for running this particular program with CLR. I'm sure now in recent times, all these have been uh, very well done. Not only with this, even no Dalai is such a tall leader, no, he could able to get this KD here. No MOU between KV Sangatan and CLR. So these are all very, very important points to you note. Know, no, nobody is realizing this today about the value of CLR, the value of Anna University, the value of Madras University, the value of any organizations. I mean, all these paperwork are asked about uh, in the system. Now, from 1978 onwards, the degree is offered by NRC. Initially, it is with Madras for a very, very long time. Look at the themes. What are the themes that the Professor Naidama, BM Das selected in the formative years, the early days? Mechanism of the standing process. All types of process. All right? The fundamental understanding. In fact, Naidama was trained on mechanism of uh, tanning as well as on shrinkage temperature. You go and see leather science journal. See, most of the problem with respect to this particular topic is all these research were published in our own in-house journal, not elsewhere. That journal is called leather science. Had it been in any other journal, no, our visibility would have gone somewhere in several folds, actually. Physical chemical properties of collagen and leather with the Dr. Damala. Footwear research and comfort properties. Again, I have collaborated with Ramanathan and published a lot of work. Analytical and spectroscopic techniques, inorganic chemistry, development of chemicals with the D Ramasar. I'm not going to deal completely all the topics here. Biochemistry of collagen, enzymes with the SMBOs, protein collagen grafting with Katie Joseph, chemical engineering aspects, pilot plant, and so on. Leather products. Layout design, plan design, processing, material handling, whatever that he has written in the old books, in his own handwriting, his own publications, all are even today, he is, he is talking about the materials. Even today, the materials for footwear is really, really important. We have to go for a new materials. And equipment efficiency, that will be all these details very, very important today. Economics. I think this is not heard of in any other central laboratories. Sailari is the only place to have economics here, and Sri Mohan Sandhavadi Sari is here, he will talk about that. Environment, waste management. Even prior to our Karkas recovery program, J.K. Kanna, Ramanathan, and Naidama, they worked on the Karkas recovery. They went and collected the fallen animals, uh, hides and skins, and then they brought it to Sailari and looked at all the properties, whether they are possible to process as a uh, leather. So those kinds of details have already worked out even before the Kathras Dr. Ramana, I said that, you know, we all know about Naira, I don't want to spend more time on him, Naira. He basically uh, collaborated with the Dynama for a very, very long duration of time and published a lot of very, very important articles, but most of the articles are in, though he published in Nature, VBA and such kind of a journal, but when he came to say that most of his work he uh, published in the leather science. He, he was basically applied MSc physics and PhD physics from Bharatwada University. He was appointed as a textile uh, lecturer in a textile institute, Victoria Textile Institute, which is a very famous institute in the country in Mumbai. From there, he went to uh, London, Leeds, to do PhD after applying a fellowship for from the Bull Secretary, which had a very, very prestigious fellowship. He received his second PhD for his work on electron microscopy. Today, those who are practicing, those who are uh, really practicing electron microscopy, 
know about what is called a replication spectroscopy. That is what you do. If you can't take any photographs, the images, the impressions of a particular material transferred to other one, and then the other one will be uh, again transferred, and then photograph will be taken. All right, that will give you the real features of the material. This is called the replication technique. Basically, you use wax kind of a material, you take it as a, a liquid, and then it will solidify. When it solidifies, you get the images, those images will be photographed. Here also the same kind of a thing he applied. It's a very, very important one. Today, replication spectroscopy is very popular among them and the optical microscopy. So he worked on the replication uh, spectroscopy. This work is very, very uh, important. Seminal quantum. And then he was appointed as uh, senior scientific officer in this institute in 1957. And then he became director of this institute in 1983. And he retired. During this period, what he did? He, he set up the first physical testing unit in this institute, biophysics laboratory, electron microscopy facility. This is the first kind of a facility in this particular uh, place, and then footwear department. He was heavy footwear. Simultaneously, another important point is he was promoted as uh, E1 in the morning and E2 in the afternoon. He got two promotions on the same day. Right? He made a similar contribution. The contributions are what? He worked on the mechanical properties of fibers. Basically, he is a textile physicist. He worked on the mechanical properties of collagen, fibers, and metals. Electron microscopy features, shrinkage temperature. Uh, Professor Nayanaba, Dr. Ramanathan, Kedlaya, they worked together. I think they must have published about 20, 25 articles on shrinkage temperature of leather, fibers, at various uh, standing stages, and so on. There are so much of information on this in case. Generally what you do is you, you take you do any tanning and then go and measure the you know, cage and say that it is done, it is not done, it is stable, it is not stable and so on. But he very thoroughly analyzed the all the fundamentals of the shrinkage phenomena and what kind of a molecular details one can obtain that's from the shrinkage uh, articles. Next is optical bioreferences and directional frictional effect. I will come back to all this topic one by one. Location and variations. In 1955, 56, 57, 58, right? These are all very novel to the scientists working in the area of ice and skin. Comfort properties of leather, that is called the footwear. And then instrumentation and technique. Today, you know, we buy equipment, you know, as we said that, oh, you know, in Japan, they have only three people, but you can buy the Raman spectroscopy. No, it is not like that in those days. Even when I joined Sailor in 1983, at that time, you know, we have to build certain things in our own. We had all the facility. That is the fourth art of uh, NIDA mark. He created a, we have a very good workshop. We have very good uh, engineering units. All right. You know, they can do anything for us. Instrumentation and technique development and the disco elasticity. Very, very important topic for any, any, any material which has a flow property. It is applicable to polymer, it is applicable to biomaterials, it is applicable to skin surfaces also. All right, this is the first work uh, I tried with, I will share it with you, with the PL Mutaya. Now you, you can see that they have worked on all kinds of anime. They are ultra structural details, very nicely worked out in those days. Very detailed um, work have been done. How is the fiber structure? What is the compactness? Whether you get the, um, three, six, the 760 Armstrong unit, the GPDS, all right? So all those details they have worked out that is related to the collagen structure. Not only all animals, they have also compared with the structure of the human. Human skin was taken and they collaborated with a very well-known skin specialist in this particular state, Tambay. They collaborated with the Dr. Tambaya and get all the structural details of the human skin today. That is not possible for various ethical uh, reasons. Next is based on that. You know, here is the one model that I am showing to you. It's a replica one. Mm -hmm. All right. It is a replica model taken for the leather that is done by the Dr. Abba. Next is by looking at all these uh, uh, details. They developed a phenomenological model for skin. What is the angle of the 
Now all those details, you now by looking at the micrographs, temp pictures and the optical micrographs, they got the how this fiber is running. What is the angle of field? You know, there is a model for this, correct? Right? Here, what uh, Dr. Dainaba is uh, uh, describing about the Tamaya interactions here, but I don't want to go into the details due to the lack of time. Another is Dr. Olivanan. We are all familiar with the Dr. Olivanan. Many Navy students of Dr. Olivanan here, all right? And uh, yeah, including Dr. P. Ramasamy also did the work with uh, Dr. Olivanan. Olivanan did his PhD with Dr. Ramanan. This is uh, report here. What are the things that they have done? They have done the stress time characteristics, and then this is in 1966. Stress relaxation, plastic stress, and the plastic is a famous topic for um, Nidam, uh, Ramanathan, and so on. Mechanical hysteresis. These are the topics that they have covered. That's what I was telling you. Shrinkage is very fond of topic for Nidam and Dr. Ramanathan. And here is the instrument set up by the Dr. Ramanathan in the biophysics laboratory. And you can see that you have a microscope, and there is a stand here, and the stand is connected to a plate, and the plate you keep the collagen fiber or leather. And then here is the variable temperature unit. You can change the about uh, potential meter, you can change the potential, and then you can vary the current and you can heat it and you can see the shrinkage phenomena here, how it does exactly happen. Actually, shrinkage phenomena, if you look at the thermodynamics of shrinkage, there is no unit temperature, it is a range. It gives only a range. All right, this is the this range they could able to get. They do a lot of samples and get the plus or minus with a particular sample. And then it continued. What they did, location and variation is a very important topic of Nayama and Dr. Ramana. And what they did is they took a skin like this and then they cut out from all these areas the samples. This is a representative model that I'm giving for shrinkage. A similar kind of locational variation studies are being done by Dr. Subha Lakshmi and Dr. Ramana and White Nayama to characterize the physical chemical properties of the material. Optical bioreferences. Those who are doing ancillary physics definitely know about what is bioreferences. And I'm sure that you must have heard about the what is ordinary ray and what is extraordinary ray. So there are some uh, materials, exhibits, if you have a particular light is sent inside, they exhibit the bioreferences. You now, depending on the refractive index in the local regions, right, you will have extraordinary ray and ordinary ray. Ordinary ray obeys all the laws of reflection. And refraction. In the case of the uh, extraordinary, the it may be fast or it may be slow, depending on the refractive index. So what they did is they calculated the they measured the bioreferences of the leather. What they do is they cut uh, the piece, piece very 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 small pieces with the help of a microtome. They get the very small slices. Those slices will be mounted on Canada balsam. And then they try to measure the refractive index and the difference in the refractive index, whether it is a positive, whether it is a negative. If it is positive, then those results are called positively bioreferential, and it is negative, they are negatively bioreferential leathers. And the positive and negative bioreferential characters have been attributed to the water structure and all other details. I'm not going to tell upon here, but it is a very, very important contribution to the leather structures. This is done by Basu, Ramanathan, and Nairama. Next is directional frictional effect. Even when I joined in biophysics department, no, many used to do this experiment. What I do is, you take the leather, and then allow the leather, allow, allow a, a small glass piece to roll on that. You, you pull it. The energy required to pull it, all right, without any disturbance, that you measure. That energy is called the friction. All right. So the if you change the direction, you, you pull along the backbone and the perpendicular to the backbone or any angular, then the friction, frictional coefficient that you measure from the this kind of a measurement is, will show a difference. This difference was attributed to the directional frictional effect of collagen fiber and leather. It's a very, very important phenomenon. But what is Ramanan already had experience in textile physics, will exhibit the DSE properties. So he directly implemented the ideas of whatever that he learned right here, and then he uh, created a new ideas from the textile physics. This is what the problem in the case of the bullets like that, you have the scales, 
So if you pull the any material along the scales, then the friction will be less. Uh, opposite to that, it will be high. Therefore, now you can understand there is something called directional frictional effect. These are all very important when you do the processing in a machine. Collagen exhibits hierarchical structure. And we can see that these uh, D bands are seen. It is 760 nanometer. That tells you about the aggregation of the collagen. I don't want to go into details, but when you have this, uh, this if you look at the amino acids, they are all of the order of Armstrong. Then you make a collagen molecule, tropocollagen molecule, let's say it's 300 nanometer uh, with the 15, uh, um, uh, 1.6 nanometer, right? Fiber length is 100 nanometer and micrometer and so on, tendon and bone and so on. Therefore, there is a hierarchical structure here. When you, when you do this processing, you know, there will be a frictional forces involving at various levels. If you look at the fiber, there is a frictional force. If you look at this as a tropocollagen, then there is a uh, frictional effect. As a fiber, you will have a frictional effect. As a leather, you will have a frictional effect. So all these one can you know, delineate with the help of these measurements. So DFE in collagen and fibers and leathers, they were shown. Today, you know, our institute is doing a very large survey of food for science. All right? Even in 1970s, right? This was stopped in our institute, carried out in our institute, right? Food for science. And we all know about this, all right? So there are various parameters, all right? Uh, and the youth, breadth, width, all right? So the ball, the waist, and so on, all these are good parameters. One, uh, I think, you know, I should not be speaking in front of uh, Dr. Chalapati, all right? So these are very, very important parameters to determine the size. The, what they do is, in determining the size, for a given length, you already adjust certain parameters to get uh, what is called a fitting, right? Therefore, there is no unique size here. You have a Paris, you have a British, you have a US, and so on. This is all described in 1970 papers, all right? Therefore, he developed a model for shoe sizing, a new size, shoe sizing system for school children. Those who attend the 1983-1980s, the uh, TGP here, all right? Before Kya uh, Harajan uh, entered the CLRI, now those have attended CLRI, everything is usually done here. Now we had what is called a children's shoe fashion show will be there in all the TGPs, all right, wherein all these will be described. So the Ramanathan could be able to get what is the length of breadth, giant of breadth, and the instep breadth and breadth. So all these uh, relationships could be could able to get, and he developed a new uh, shoe sizing system. Not only that, um, at that time, gauge analysis was not there. So we have to determine the weight, impression, how much is the load given by a particular kit on the system. Therefore, now weight distribution, he did the weight distribution analysis. They have designed what is called a micro density meter in this institute, and then they have used that to measure the weight distribution. So they evolved the shoe sizing. Not only that, they did a statistical analysis, a scientific study on the rate of growth of feet, right, for the kids. Based on all this analysis, he developed what is called a comfort index, true comfort index. I request Dr. Nisha to note this particular point, all right. So what they did is they uh, measured temperature humidity index for the shoes. What they did is it is done by collaboration with Raghunathan, Anantha Narayanan, and so on, by Dr. Kamath, along with Ramanathan and Naidapha. What they did is, uh, they, they, they condition all the shoe and also socks, and they will give it to the wearer. And then after wearing, they connect all the uh, thermocouples, and then they measure the temperature. For two hours, four hours, six hours, eight hours, they measure the humidity, and then the comfortness parameter they calculated. What is the comfort parameter? The comfort for a parameter is IPH equal to 0.4 into dry bulk temperature plus wet bulk temperature plus 50. It's a one equation that they derived and then they could able to conclude that it was observed that with the cold climate, the shoes were found comfortable when IPH is 64 and above. Therefore, I request Nishan to redo this for the gloves that she is making. And then you can come out with a new parameter. It's a very, very important contribution. See, these are not studied by our own colleagues, our own scientists, because 
these are all not in the web of science. If it is on the, on the web of science, you would have tried to uh, read this, but we may not have seen this. It's a very, very important point. This is done in 1970s, right? Yeah, this is in Lecha, 1970. Uh, Ramanathan and Guha. They worked on the radiation, right? In fact, Chalabis uh, was talking about the radiation. This is on radiation, uh, right? In fact, the place where we are all sitting, it's called the radiation chemistry lab. Red man Chandra Kumar came and then he put the NMR, it is a radiation chemistry lab. Alright, so the effect of ultraviolet radiation, gamma radiation, neutron radiation, all the uh, leathers and fibers are in uh, in cell lab, right? And not only that, all the properties. Next is the very big topic of minus viscoelasticity. Maxwell and Kelvin, these are now you can you can think of a leather. It's a iron can be measured with the help of a spray. Alright. But if you have a flow kind of a property, that kind of a material that we have a polymer, a soft material, today parlance it's called a soft matter. In the soft matter, this cannot be explained with a simple the spring model or with a simple viscosity model. So you need to have a combination of Maxwell model and viscosity. Therefore, there is a mathematical model can be developed based on considering the given method, whether it is a Maxwell model or a Kelvin rocket model. This model explains the stress reaction and mechanical behavior. This explains the creep of the material and so on. Therefore, Dr. Ramanathan started working on the viscoelastic model for collagen fibers, right, with the Sanjeevi and also with uh, Somanathan and others, uh, right. But the very, very important contribution here is a biaxial testing. Thanks, Tanigay, for sharing the uh, details. All right. So, this is a biaxial. Actually, this, if you look at this, forget this to arc. This is what the general tensile testing specimen. What they did is they put this also. Therefore, I can fix these two ends with a certain amount of load. This can be fixed. I can pull in the third direction. Therefore, the, the fixing these two directions, all right, I can vary. This work is done by N. Somanathan at Biophysics. Later on, he was uh, with the uh, polymer de department. All right. So, this is a very, very important one. Now that this is uh, done actually by axial, this is the biaxial one, but uh, they developed uh, Sanjeevi, M.B. Naresh, Somanathan, and all others, and <laughs> developed this particular uh, institute. This is a biaxial test. Fracture mechanics. How leather is fractured? Wear and tear. How wear and tear changes the property? How the leathers are fractured? All right. So the, they have uh, uh, created a particular area called the fracture mechanics. This is initiated by Dr. Sanjeevi. Then you can understand, you know, this, all these are. When you do the fracture mechanics, you take those uh, specimens, out on them, and see. Now, when it is put at a very high temperature, when it is put at very high temperature, you can see that the fiber is melting. When it is put at a low temperature, it is a cold kind of a drawing. It's not cold drawing per se, but you know the, the samples are not melting. Therefore, there is something called temperature time uh, superposition principle. It's called the Boltzmann superposition principle in the area of uh, um, this is called Sanjeev and team, uh, they looked at the um, drape property of uh, leathers. It's a very, very important property of leather. And you can see that maybe you can imagine a Trishal is standing here. I don't want to show it here. All right. And then a new new approach. What, what you need is uh, take any garment leather and put it like this. The area occupied, freely falling leather, the area occupied, that measures the drape of the material. So they developed a new technique, developed a new instrument to measure that array. This is the uh, this is the way in which the under gravity it falls, all right. And this this is called a drape, and the drape exhibits a uh, what they call the hysteresis. It, it doesn't follow the same path when you repeatedly do some attacks. This is the work of uh, Sanjeevi Arunam and Subrata Das, all right. He was in industry and why did happen? This is published in the Journal of Textile Research Institute in 1986. This is my work, that's a calculation I think with that. We, this kind of a work is started in CLRA. Right? Physical structural studies of weather during various stages of tanning. This paper was corrected by Dr. Pia at the time Ramanan was at work. Um, he was uh, not there, he died during when I was doing uh, this research for further. And uh, I did uh, what I think 40. So uh, I got it, and then we generally split into two. One was uh, treated as 
one was typical the standard other one was given the processing and so on therefore uh, we followed all the details and we could able to conclude many many interesting uh, details from that particular then uh, later on you know dr tr took over the biophysics department he also guided us in the same directions and then usha did a lot of work on the uh, viscoelastic properties of uh, rtt then uh, ramanathan did a lot of work on musical in instrument percussion instruments especially he was working on tara tapata ganjira and so on how those the process leather behave all right they wanted to understand the tonal quality and uh, the physics associated with that because this mainly you know naida uh, told ramanathan to look at the music probably they might have got it from the ideas of uh, sir siri ram he did not have on violin and brother and so on so what dr ram sam gave a new dimension to this to this particular topic he involved bomeyal param sivaram and vidwan bomeyal param sivaram and dr naresh dr sanjeevi the entire biophysics was involved uh, i'll just show you that you know he could able to take it to a very greater heights right they wrote a book on uh, mridangam of uh, looking at various aspects right while he plays you will see that you will get a metallic tone right how this metallic metallic tone comes and there is a black patch here what kind of materials are used for making the particular uh, black patch we call it a sole in mridangam language and this leather part and then the alkanum that tightening the processing of wood and all the aspects has been looked at by the ramas ram swami and the nareesh and sivaram and the sanjeev etc right so this is the tone i was telling you the mechanical tone the mechanical sound how it comes from this kind of a material and it's a very very important one the fundamentals and over tones all these are very very important he is so very from sivaram so the right of time is start here and go a yeah, special symposium on kolaga The symposium organized by Dr. Ramanathan with the help of Naidama in Kerala is very famous. That would be able to place the college and research in this country on the international map. This was done in 1960, and uh, you can see that this volume is edited by Ramanathan and uh, Naidama was part of it. Not only Naidama, Sanjeev and Jaina are also there. Uh, it's a very very important contribution. Those who do research on college and know about what is this particular. one not only this symposium i want the people to note it right in 1999 um, we had another college and symposium in connection with the um, iultc all right so the satellite symposium trends and collagen held at triple helix auditorium very same auditorium during the period 27 to 30 january 1999 all right and this the, all the papers in this particular uh, symposium was uh, came as a special issue in indian academy of sciences subsequently uh, in the year uh, 2008 uh, we had another symposium on collagen right and we are going to have another for a symposium in acho the significant contribution what is the contribution of celery to uh, leather we we know about that. what is the contribution to The, the largest part of the world from the fundamental understanding of structure of collagen it is the first contact with the cell are ramachandra attended the foundation uh, stone laying as well as the inauguration of this particular main building this cell was in uh, starting our studies but this material was not available with the madras so we wanted gangaru tail tendon or a b facular tendon Here again, it was very lucky that Central Leather Research Institute was in Madras. In fact, it was our neighbor in Adaya. I contacted Dr. Naidu Ma and said, "Alright," and they obtained uh, us a big tube full of ATP from Australia. Okay, this is what uh, I have not uh, written here. This is said by uh, Jayana. Dear friends, has delighted bring Dr. Uh, Dr. Jayana. He was informed by Dr. Tia during the inauguration of the auditorium 
the opening of the Lubis in the present auditorium is situated. It has been named the Ramachandran Prakriti Auditorium. This generous display on the part of CSI to honor the contributions of our volunteer lives, six awards, the Dow and the Bangalore. It's a very dangerous stuff. And it's very appropriate since the same day is such a condition which forms a very part of the skin material forming the other for safety of the perfection in these two laboratories. Because medical patients are not able to attend the function in person, but I would like to send the following message to you on this happy occasion. In fact, a specific interaction to the CSRA has opened in 1952. Right. So he was here in 1952. That's what he is telling. And this happens to have This is the Ramachandran stereo chemistry model. I think we will be we will be seeing this particular model here. We donated this model to us and we kept it here. And this is the fiber diffraction pattern of the uh, collagen that was obtained by Ramanathan, the fibers that we gave it to him. What I did here. All right. In fact, you know, uh, 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 GNR says that it should be then possible to solve the crystal structure of the material. X-ray analysis of such molecules would certainly reveal most of the important features of collagen technologies that have been worked out only by theory so far. So the key worked only by theory. He was looking for the models. All right. So the the, the very very important debate in the history of structure of collagen is the number of hydrogen bonds. It's called the Richard Creek one bond and the Madras model has a two hydrogen bonds. So what I did is, as suggested by Dr. Ramsami, I started working on how these uh, uh, molecules have the single bond hydrogen bond, whether single hydrogen bond is possible, or two hydrogen bond is possible, whether it is sequence dependent. Those analysis that I have taken up in the early years of my research career, somewhere around 86. But no, I couldn't do much during that period. I did some PhD, I got a degree, then went abroad and came back and then started my independent career. Then I started looking at how this collagen structure behaves, depending on the various sequences. So sequence dependent structure and stability dynamics of the collagen has been initiated in our group. All right. So this is what it is basically. Uh, it's not moving, uh, it's not going actually. I don't know what is the reason. Uh, so you will you will see that in the next slide what we have done is can you check that last one this is a very important I don't want to show all the all the, all the details but this is very important you have a triple helix and then you will see the hydrogen body so the, it depends on the it depends on the sequence it has a very pro high kind of a sequence. Every third residue is high, then you will have a, a, a single hydrogen bond. If you have any other hexan boy, then you will have a double hydrogen bond. You, you can see that you will have a both formation of the. Only this is enough. Yeah, show the, show the, show the. Right, now you will see that, I'm sorry. Yeah, now you will see that, that it forms a beautiful triple helix. It's okay. Yeah, you can see that around the, the you will you, at some point you will have one hydrogen bond, and at some point you will have a two hydrogen bonds. Therefore, now we we could able to solve some uh, idea from the crystal structure as well as during the period Barbara Darcy and uh, others. And we have also could able to show that if uh, uh, a particular sequence no don't, does not have the hydroxy proline, you will have two hydrogen bonds. You have a proline and hydroxy proline together. Single hydrogen bond. You know, this uh, detail we could able to work on. Then we worked on the interruptions in collagen. 
then that completely changes the axial registry and then leading to what is called the network formation in collateral. <laughs> How the structure of MMP, MMP2 interacts with the collagen and then we propose the model. Uh, and could you put it on full screen? Only this slide. Yeah, so this is a very important uh, contribution from our group. But this will have a collagen binding domain that's called CBD. It, it binds at one particular point in collagen. This is a catalytic domain. It does all the business part of the MRP2. You will have a hemopixin domain. During the interaction process, what happens here is CBD binds at one particular point before, after the cleavage. Hemopixin domain and comes and fixes the collagen on the other side and then leading to what is called the catalysis. All right. It does. So we could able to propose the model for the MMP2 catalysis. So I stop here. The chain biophysics, uh, Devis, Balakshmi, Basu, Pachasali, Anathadarayana, Mohan Radha Krishnan, PL Mutaya, Govardhan Rao worked on the directional friction effect. Mutaya worked on various aspects of location variation. Subalakshmi looked at the various aspects of location variation. Boss worked on bioreferences and Kentaya worked on shrinkage with the Nidama, Olivan and Sar, and you all know about them, Rani Bhaskara, D. H. Kamak worked on the comfort properties of footwear. Krishna Sen, I don't know how many know Krishna Sen, Vankapaya worked on the foot sizing, Dr. Sanjivi on the scholastic uh, properties of leather, and Loganathan on various uh, furnishing and uh, uh, physical uh, chemical properties. Raghunathan who was involved in the uh, football research along with the dear Thomas uh, and uh, Sanjeevi and uh, uh, others. And uh, Rajaram worked on the land, uh, various aspects of biophysics of the nature, all direction on radiation, D. Ramasamy and various processing of leather and its mechanical and physical properties, all of the processing, and they are all very good electron microscopies. He can do tensile testing, electron microscopy, Luka also, and Venkasara on the footwear, Bala Subramaniam on music, Swaminathan and polymer, collagen, leather, and today, so he is the sort of authority on donor of the process and Naresh microscopy, all right, he is also very familiar with the physical properties of leather and two-dimensional testing and so on. Subramanian, I don't know what to say about that, all right, and the quad is, where are we going, all right, if you look at that, you know, there is one paper I saw today, sustainable utilization of leather waste, for novel waterborne polyurethane begins for collagen based functional paper. There is something called functional paper. Where are we going? It's a functional paper. And then collagen based nanoparticle for cancer, collagen based nanoparticle for drone or acceptor systems, and NMR, collagen based NMR for understanding the spectrum and so on. Uh, my acknowledgement, uh, the Sundaraman and the Adi Jaisingham did all the collagen related work. Karthik and Karthasami for collecting all the materials. I had long discussion with Dr. Sanjeevi about the history of biophysics laboratory and the collaboration with the Ma, Madan for uh, calling me to give this particular lecture. And Dr. Shanti from the library, Dr. Sanjeevi from the library, Kanige Velan for giving a lot of information, Raghav Rao sharing his slides, Sandeshekan for some useful information, Dr. Srinath. And Dr. Rasami for giving all the valuable inputs. Thank you all for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for a wonderful lecture and enlightening the contribution of Dr. N. Ramnathan uh, in the field of data research and also.